Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and share four fun and easy activities to help your students tell time on both analog and digital clocks. In grades K through two, we want our students to be able to recognize, you know, the different parts of a clock, the hour hand, the minute hand. We want them to be able to tell time in 15 minute increments. In kindergarten and first grade, I believe it's only hour and half hour. But later on, we do want them to know those 15 minute increments. And we also want them to have some sort of general understanding of elapsed time. So we want them to know what activities might only take a minute to finish and what other activities might take a full hour to complete. I'm also gonna go ahead and share a couple tools I love to use when teaching time in the classroom. So if you're excited for this video, give it a thumbs up and let's get started. Okay, the first activity I like to do when teaching time with my students is called clock makers. And realistically, what I want students to be able to do is I want them to make a clock with me. As the teacher, I love to use my Carson DeLosa Judy clock. It looks like this. It is one of my favorite things. I love that the gears actually work and students can actually see what happens as that, you know, minute hand goes around and the hour slowly moves. While they can look at clocks all they want, I want students to be able to actually make their own because we walk through the process of what the marks on the clock actually mean. And this way they are a part of that process with me. When doing an activity like this, I like to give my students a blank clock that looks like this with the hour and the minute hand on there. And as you can see, it's a blank clock and it just has a spot for you to go ahead and write all the numbers. The first thing we would do is of course, label those numbers so we'd put 12 at the clock and have it go all the way around so that way the clock hours are complete. Then what I have students do is make four little tick marks in between each of the numbers. That way I explain to them that those are the minutes and as we count all the way around for one hour, we will have 60 of them. Next we grab a ruler, we draw some straight lines and I have them divide their clock into five minute increments. I also like to have them use two different colors like I did here. That way students can really see the difference every time there are five minutes that pass and they can see the difference between the hours as well. Last but not least, we go ahead and label that hour hand and the minute hand and we attach it to the center of our clock with one of those little paper fasteners that actually lets it spin around. I do have that clock template in my telling time hands-on unit that I made for K through two, but you could totally just grab a blank circle of cardstock. The cardstock tends to last a lot longer and you can have students do the same thing with you. You might be able to complete this in one day with your first or second grade students. In kindergarten, this would usually take a couple days to kind of go over and we really talk about each part of that clock. As I am showing different times on my big yellow clock, I have them then show me that exact same time on their own clock there. Once students have gone ahead and made their own clock, that is when I use the big yellow Judy clock and I will tell them a time. We'll start always with the hour before we move to half hour and then moving to 15 minutes increments. So I'll say, show me four o'clock. They'll do it on their own clocks with the minute hand and the hour hand in the right spot. And then I will go ahead and turn my Judy clock so they can see it. Once students have gone ahead and made their analog clock and have an idea of how it works, I always like to tie in the digital clock aspect as well. So we definitely go over that, you know, four o'clock looks like four zero zero and four fifteen, four thirty, etc. So instead of just saying four o'clock out loud, the next step would be to actually write the analog or sorry, write the digital time on the board and have students show it on their analog clocks as well. That way they're always making that connection between the analog and the digital. And lastly, another way I love to use the clock that our students will make themselves is by reading a book like The Grouchy Ladybug right here. And in this book, they talk about a lot of different times. They have different times on the actual book. So as I read it aloud, I would have students with clocks in their hands and they would make that time for each of the pages where it says it. So they would try to match it with the book. All right, after students are comfortable making time to the hour, half hour, and if you're in second grade, to the 15 minute marks, then I like to have students play a game called staying up until midnight. I have a little spinner that looks like this. You can see that it has 15 minutes, 10 minutes, one hour, half an hour, and five minutes. Now using their own individual clocks, either the ones that you made, or a lot of you have different you know, student clocks that you already have in your classroom as manipulatives, they can use whatever clock they have. And to play this game, it is a very simple. You pretend that students start at noon and their goal is they're trying to race until midnight. They're gonna see the first to make it till midnight. 
So all they'll do is take turns spinning the spinner, and then whatever time increment it lands on, students will have to move their clock ahead that far. This is a great way to get students used to seeing time when it's not just starting at the o'clock, not starting at top of the hour. So they may have moved five minutes and then they need to go ahead and move 15 minutes and it really gets them used to counting by fives, which is another reason I like to color code the clocks that we make with the every other color. It just easily lets them see counting by five minutes at a time. That little game in that spinner is also included in my hands-on telling time unit, but you could totally just go back, pause that right there and make your own little spin and like I said, students can do this with their own clocks that they have to play this game. I also like this game because students get used to, you know, 12 o'clock being noon and also 12 o'clock being midnight and how we see each of those times on a clock twice per day. So since we're starting at noon, it gets students practicing moving a little bit and a little bit and a little bit. And the first one that all the way gets to midnight is the winner. All right, activity number three is to practice some time sorts. Now there's three different type of sorting that I like to have students do, and it kind of goes along with the midnight noon situation that I mentioned earlier. And one concept of time students need to know and understand is the difference between AM and PM. So one type of sort I like to do looks like this. You can see there's an AM and a PM header. We of course talk about, you know, AM, the differences between AM and PM. And then I often like to give students some little cards here like playing with my toys, math. So like your math block at school, going to bed, getting ready for school, waking up, taking a bath or shower. And as you can see, some of those playing with toys, some students might do that, you know, in the AM and in the PM. They might take a bath or a shower in the AM. Others might take it in the PM. They can kind of talk about all of these different activities and when they do them at school. Now doing math, and I have some other ones like your English block or maybe your specials, that's a fun one because usually throughout the day, throughout your school day, not usually, definitely, throughout your school day, you're going to switch from AM to PM after it reaches noon. So your math block might be in the morning, but other people, their math block may be in the PM. So they'll have to decide where they sort them. The next time sort I like to have students practice is the difference between one minute and one hour. And this gets students really thinking about what time means, what that elapsed time means. If I hear something takes one minute, is that a long time? Is that a short time? How long is it compared to one hour? Here's an example of a sort I would do like that. Again, you see about one minute, about one hour. And we talk about these different things brushing your teeth. Is that, does that take closer to one minute or closer to one hour? What about making your bed, building a snowman, painting a large picture? Most of these have a pretty obvious answer like brushing your teeth would be closer to taking a minute instead of a whole hour, but some you may be able to have really good discussions around and figure out if it's closer to that hour mark or closer to the minute mark. Lastly, I like to do an elapsed time sort and that looks like this one. This is definitely for your older students, maybe second grade or the end of first grade. And here they look at two different clocks. They have a start time and an end time. So they have to figure out how much time has actually passed. Now this one, there's no talking points and deciding if it's right or wrong, or maybe there's more than one answer. This one, there is a correct answer and they'll have to decide did more than an hour pass or less than an hour pass from start to finish. All of those little sorts that I shared there are again in my time unit, but you could also do this without the unit at all. You could simply have students write on two pieces of paper or use two different color papers. Maybe for the, is it closer to a minute or closer to an hour one? And then you would share brushing your teeth and ask students to hold up if they think that would take closer to a minute or closer to an hour and you can discuss. Same goes with the AM and PM sort and the elapsed time. You could simply have them make the two signs, throw up an example on the board or say it out loud and see what students say. On to number four. All right, last but not least, activity number four is to play some games. Did you think I would make it through a math video without suggesting playing games to, you know, master a skill? That's just not my style. I love using games to have students practice their fluency and mastery with any type of math skill, and telling time is no different. 
Realistically, students are going to need a lot of practice looking at analog clocks and determining what time it is, especially when it gets to those half hours. Those can be tricky for students in those 45 minute marks. Now, just like with a bunch of other skills, I do have these print and play telling time games, and it includes six different games for students to practice telling time. Most of them are to the hour and half hour, but there are a few games that also have the 15 minute increments in there as well. My favorite one is race around the clock. It looks like this. And for this game, students will simply roll the die and move that many spaces around the clock. They have to read the digital clock and then find the matching analog clock inside and color it with their color crayon. Students go back and forth until the whole middle of that circle is colored in, and then they get to see which student colored in the most analog clocks. For making it all the way through this video, I do want to share that race around the clock game with you. You can go ahead and find that linked in my description down below. That is just one of the six games, but you can grab that copy to play with your students. So there you have four different activities to help your students start telling time. And I really hope you enjoyed them or got some ideas, strategies, activities, and I hope you can try out that free print and play game. As always, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel because I upload a new video here on YouTube every Thursday and Sunday. See you next time. Bye.